Bravely Default 2 may look like your standard turn-based RPG, but there is a lot more going on under the hood. If you've never played a Bravely Default game, then 2 can be kind of tough. So we've compiled 8 tips to help you navigate the world and give you the edge in combat. Before we get into it, consider subscribing to GameSpot's YouTube channel and check out Steve Watt's review of Bravely Default 2. Alright, let's get to it. Number 1. Bravely Defaulting The core combat mechanics in Bravely Default are braving and defaulting, as the title of the game implies. Braving allows a character to attack multiple times in a row, while defaulting is a defensive maneuver that stores an action point. The catch is that your characters can only attack if they have zero or at least one free brave point or BP. So if you go full brave at the beginning of battle, they will go into turn debt, meaning they can't perform any actions for the next few turns. You could play conservatively, taking only one action per turn, but battles will drag on and you'll give your opponents more opportunities to chip away at your party's health. On the other hand, you could go full brave with all your party members, but if you don't clean up your opposition in that opening phase, you'll be leaving your entire party open for the next few turns. Success is about finding a balance between braving and defaulting. Another step in the right direction. So exciting. <laughs> New powers, huh? Number 2. Defaultly Braving So let's dig into the numbers a bit more. As I mentioned before, combat actions are tracked with BP points. If a character's BP points are 0 or positive, then they have an action. If they are negative, then that character has to sit out a turn. As long as you have 0 or plus 1 Brave point, you can go full Brave. This lets you attack 4 times in a row. However, if you go full brave with only plus 1 BP, that will set your party member back to negative 2 BP. That means you won't be able to do anything until you are back at positive BP. This is where defaulting comes in handy. By defaulting, a party member is giving up his or her action in order to defend and more importantly, bank a brave point. Once you hit plus 3 BP, you can go full brave without going into turn debt. For weaker foes, you can go full brave at the beginning in order to knock them out quickly. For tougher enemies, it's best to play a little more defensively. The last thing you want is to be in turn debt during an enemy onslaught. Bravely seconding. You probably thought we were done talking about this, but there's a lot to cover. There are some important quirks when it comes to this system that you should know about. For example, if you knock out an enemy while braving, your next attack will automatically hit the enemy directly to the right of it. If the enemy you just knocked out is on the far right, you'll automatically target the enemy on the far left. I try to only use enough BP to finish off an enemy. It's not terrible if your attacks spill over to another enemy, but it makes it harder to aim for weaknesses. Here it comes. Get some. If you run out of MP while braving, your attack will fail and you'll waste brave points. If an attack's text turns red, that means you won't have enough MP to perform that move when it comes up. Finally, enemies can also brave in default, making certain encounters particularly deadly. In order to check their BP, press X. There are also certain abilities that cost BP to use. That means if a move costs 1 BP, it will actually take up 2 BP, 1 to use the move and 1 to carry out the action. Number 4. Combat Tips With all of that out of the way, let's talk about general combat tips. First off, Y lets you swing your sword outside of battle. This can be used to cut grass or to smack an enemy before entering a battle. We must make the most of this opportunity. If you successfully hit an enemy with your sword before battle, then your party will feel brave, meaning that they kick off the fight with plus one BP. Otherwise, they'll start at zero. General rule of thumb is that if an enemy runs away from you, it's weak. If it charges you, they are probably strong. If you're up against a foe you've never seen before, use the magnifying glass item or the examine skill in order to see the enemy's weaknesses and HP. The freelance job automatically starts with examine, so you probably won't need any magnifying glasses early on. Number 5. Preparing for a fight Although magnifying glasses aren't super useful early on, HP and MP restoration items are. The most efficient way to heal while exploring the world is by using a tent. If you're exploring the world map, a tent will fully replenish your party's HP and MP. Unfortunately, tents don't work in a dungeon. This means you want to bring plenty of restoration items with you before setting out. 
If you aren't careful, a group of enemies can wreak havoc on your party, so make sure to stock up on both items and equipment whenever you're in a town. It's also worth picking up a few teleport stones and ward lights. Teleport stones let you warp out of a dungeon, and ward lights make it tougher for enemies to spot you. Number 6, Jobs and Subjobs. Another key feature of Bravely Default 2 is its in-depth job system. As you progress through the game, you'll unlock new jobs which you can freely assign to party members as main or sub jobs. Jobs range from Black Mage to Monk and determine a character's look, moveset, and progression. Jobs each have their own separate leveling track that max out at 12. As you level it up, you'll unlock more abilities, both active and passive. Keep in mind that only your main job will level up. Subjobs allow characters to utilize abilities and perks from another job, but they don't level up. When deciding which character should have which jobs, it's important to find a main job and sub job that not only complement each other, but the party member and their equipment. If you press Y on the job screen in the menu, you can see the job's recommended equipment. Number 7, Passive Abilities. As you level up, you'll unlock passive abilities. However, if you want to reap the benefits of those passive abilities, you need to equip them. To do that, go to the main menu and click on the abilities page. Here you can equip passive abilities that correspond to your equip job and sub job. You can only activate five passive abilities at a time and the game will not assign these abilities automatically. So it's worth checking this menu often throughout your travels. Number 8, Miscellaneous Tips. Honestly, there's a lot to cover with this game, so I'm just going to rattle off some tips that didn't quite fit in the previous entries. So here goes. Use the exploration feature. You will passively collect a ton of useful items when your console is in rest mode. Make sure to check back at exploration HQs in various cities to collect your reward. Don't worry, the game will do a much better job of explaining this feature early on. Most spells have two targeting options. Before you cast a certain spell, you can press Y to target all enemies instead of just one. If enemies in a dungeon are running away from you, it's a good sign you're ready to take on the boss. Take on every side quest. Most require little effort and offer decent rewards. The plus button lets you speed up battle. This is very useful when you have to grind and grinding you will do. Equip load. Each character can only carry so much. Be cognizant of how much stuff you are equipping. Any weight increases also show up blue when you're equipment shopping, so keep that in mind. Blue isn't always good. I'm sure once this goes up, I'll have thought up a dozen more tips, but if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter at Jacob Deck or leave a comment below and hopefully someone in the comments can help you out. For more on Bravely Default 2 and other RPGs, don't forget to subscribe to GameSpot.